Always great catching up with Dr. Leanne Parks, infectious disease specialist and microbiologist at the Jewish General Hospital. Dr. Parks, hello, how are you? I'm doing great, how are you? Doing well, thanks. Uh, listen, people like yourself have said since the very beginning of the pandemic, the best vaccine is the one that's available. And I mean, I don't think that's changed, correct me if I'm wrong, um, but I think for one, the idea, the concept of vaccine shopping, you know, we hear it over and over again. It's really become a thing. And in recent days, maybe a couple of weeks, kind of all across the country, we're hearing a little bit of a newfound hesitancy towards the Moderna vaccine, which we haven't really heard up until this point. Why do you suppose that is? And is it justified in any way? Well, I, I'm not really sure why that is. Um what I can say is that the Moderna vaccine functions very well. So Moderna and Pfizer are both messenger RNA vaccines, so they have similar mechanisms of action. Um, and the efficacy is very good. So if we look at Moderna, it uh, has been shown in its initial trials to uh, present or prevent severe disease 100%. Um, and that's severe disease or hospitalization. This was of 28,000 patients that they studied. Um, Symptomatic disease, it has a good efficacy of at about 94.1% and about 80% after one dose. So th that's exceptional efficacy, efficacy data. With respect to side effects, uh, the side effects are very similar amongst the two vaccines. So there's not a lot to really be concerned, particularly be between distinguishing um, between our, our, our options uh, of, of messenger RNA vaccines. So that is exceptional news that these vaccines work and we're seeing them work in real time within our own community. Um, and with respect to secondary effects or adverse effects, they're all the same in terms of local pain at the injection site, some lymph nodes that might be swollen, and sometimes a little bit of fever and feeling a bit unwell for the first 24 hours after the vaccine. Uh, we have not had a signal for either vaccine of severe adverse events. So in other words, what, what I'm getting from this is that it's a little bit surprising to see that there is some hesitation towards something like Moderna. I think it was uh, you mentioned to me uh, on, a, on a different conversation that we had that I think it's our colleague, Dr. Yves Nolten, who said if you're being offered Pfizer or Moderna, it's like being offered a Mercedes or a BMW. You're not going to you're not going to turn away from either one of them. Just take take the one that's offered to you and what's available. Right. Um if let me put you in a hypothetical situation, if you're the one working at one of our vaccination sites on our territory and somebody comes in and they're maybe hoping for the Pfizer vaccine, for example, and are then offered the Moderna vaccine and and maybe disappointed or not wanting to take it. What's the one thing you tell that person before they potentially elect to walk away from a covid-19 vaccine, one that clearly works? Um, I, my advice would be the best vaccine is the vaccine in your arm. Um, and the Moderna vaccine that's being presently offered is a fantastic vaccine. And I can tell you from a personal side of things, um, my grandmother received Moderna, my sister received Moderna, and they are both incredibly happy to be under the antibody protection of both of these, particularly since they're both in Ontario, which has quite a few variants of concern and what they know and what the data shows is that the vaccine does work for variants of concern. Um, even though it has a less neutralizing antibody level, it's still enough to surpass the virus, which is the key point. Thank you so much for doing this. We really appreciate it, Dr. Parks. Thanks for having me.